Tropical forests are disappearing at an alarming rate. Forests provide livelihoods and jobs to hundreds of millions of people, as well as habitat for almost half of the world's species. They are also regulators of local climate, and their ability to store carbon means that they are essential in addressing climate change. That's why forest is important as an integral part of the global environmental commons, which is the foundation for sustainable development. It's not just on the saving the forest, but also how we can transform food and land use system. Increasingly, governments, companies, finance institutions, and NGOs are looking to jurisdictional approaches as a way to scale efforts to delink deforestation from commodity production. Now, a jurisdiction can be an entire country, but often the national scale is really too big to be feasible and a lot of decision-making authority over land use is devolved to subnational jurisdictions. The jurisdictional approach highlights the critical role of government and the need for wall-to-wall -wall holistic approaches to forest and land use governance across a defined territory as key components of any realistic effort to protect forests. The jurisdictional approach offers important policy innovation including partnerships with supply chain actors, indigenous and local communities, civil society, and financial players. And so the idea is that at that subnational scale, it's the sweet spot to translate the kinds of global commitments that we have to stop climate change and conserve biodiversity and marry those to the objectives that local communities have. They want livelihoods, they want their rights protected, you know, they want access to international markets, they want access to investment. It's at that subnational scale that's about the right place to bring all those interests together and come to a unified land use planning scheme that meets those different objectives. Jurisdictional approach, wherever it has been practiced, I think is, is a best management practice that can be adopted and should be adopted actually in our case so that we can move, move far and fast. District government in Indonesia is actually going above and beyond what people are expecting. They're starting this movement that's purely voluntary, that's built in from this jurisdictional approach movement. What we're looking for is really finding ways to support good governance at the local level and reward that with our business, with our purchasing of commodities like palm oil, our investment in infrastructure, because we want to effectively de-risk our supply chain and help transform the sector. The best way we can do that is to work in a public-private collaborative approach. Muitas das organizações e empresas que estão no TFA compartilham dos mesmos objetivos que o Estado do Mato Grosso tem de redução de desmatamento, de aumento de produção e de inclusão social. So in the big picture, we're seeing a big change, commitments by governments, commitments by companies, and most recently, the investors, the people supplying the money that makes all this happen, are also beginning to get the message that deforestation is a really bad thing. We're working with the Mato Grosso government to help them implement a Red Plus jurisdictional system and also help channel red finance to the ground, to this beef sector, to the stable cattle sector, but also to other supply chains like soy, which is also a driver of deforestation. TFA 2020 hosts jurisdictional dialogues that bring together sub-national jurisdictions with key stakeholders. To date, 12 jurisdictions have presented specific opportunities for collaboration to the private sector, financial institutions, civil society, and other organizations. All these players can respond to these opportunities and help jurisdictional governments to implement their forest conservation plans.